name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever the ages of all ages, Amen. These four men that brought this friend of theirs, Jesus, offered up a very special gift. And of course, we, you know, approaching the season of giving and gifting and all these things that we think about after Thanksgiving and Christmas coming up and so on, people are often thinking very much about gift giving. And we need to kind of like reassess and redirect who is the giver and what are the gifts and why we give the things we give and so on. There's many questions that one can ask about gifts and gift giving. And we think of Christmas coming up, and you know, Jesus offered himself, was born for us to save us. And we think of the season of giving, uh, many other things that include like, you know, food and all gifts of all kinds. But it's good to think about the giver or the greatest giver who gave himself to humanity. And although maybe these four men didn't really know uh, what Jesus was going to do for them in a matter of weeks or months on the cross for salvation, but they seemed to understand that the greatest thing they could offer would be themselves or one another to Christ, to God. If you look carefully at the passage, it says that they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So when they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. For some reason, when I, when I thought of this, I, I got the image of the three wise men coming to Jesus after his birth to offer, up gold, to offer him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But think about it. Does Jesus need gold? No. Does he need frankincense? No. Does he need myrrh? No. Does he need anything that this world can offer? The answer is still no, because he created all of this. Everything here is of his loving creation. So he doesn't need these things. But what he does, though, is want certain things. And of course, wants are more important than needs, in the sense that he needs nothing, but he wants from us certain things. He wants us to offer up love and to offer up one another. The greatest gift, I mean, you think, well, if they're going to offer a person to Jesus or to bring someone to Jesus, they should offer some sort of king or emperor or some uh, very high status symbol on earth. But they brought him a paralytic man, a man paralyzed, a man that, you know, for all intents of purposes, this man is not really worthy to be brought to the feet of Jesus. And yet Jesus says, no, quite the contrary. This is exactly what I want. This is exactly what I want. I want the love that bound these five men, the four that carried, and the one that let himself be carried. This is what I want. And that's why when Jesus looked at him, he didn't tell him right away, Anything other than, I mean, firstly he said, because of their faith, he is forgiven. Because of their faith, because of their love, because of what they did. Jesus expects us to do that with each and every one of us. You may recall the time when Jesus sat with a huge multitude of people and was speaking to them. And they asked him, a person shouted out different things. One said, you know, blessed is the womb that bore you. And another one shouted, your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. The Lord responded a very universal, important statement when he was told these things. He didn't respond with exclusivity. He didn't respond with saying, yes, that's my mother and these are my brothers. Because they were. St. Mary, his mother who he cherishes, who is his holy mother. This has no debate. But he said, all of these look are my brothers and my mothers and my family, everyone. Every one of these people, every one of these people matter to me so tremendously. And whoever does the will 
of my Father in heaven is my mother, my brother, and so on and so on and so on. So this is the will of God. It says, His will is that none should perish. That's His will. That no one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. This is His will. So He's asking me, He's asking you, saying, These are my mother and my brothers. Not just the people sitting in church right now, but this whole universe, this whole planet. These are my mother and my brothers. Particularly those who do His will, of course. But in the meantime, He calls me and He calls you and He calls every one of us to offer Him one another. These four men saw that this paralyzed friend of theirs could do nothing in and of himself, right? There's nothing he could do. He was paralyzed and, you know, it's not like he could even do anything to make it easy for them to bring him to Jesus. This man was literally dead weight, like literally a problem, not very easy to deal with. And because we get the illustration of, okay, the man's paralyzed on a bed, it's not his fault, he can't do anything. But we tend to forget that the Lord also reminds us that there are different forms of paralysis. There are different forms of dead weight. There are different forms of resistance. There are forms of passive aggression. There are forms of false appearances and false religion. There are forms of hypocrisy. There are all kinds of things. Yet the Lord doesn't say, forget about those. He said, quite the contrary, particularly those. Those that are paralyzed or crippled due to whatever sins or whatever challenges they are facing. Bring me these. Bring me these people. You can't save them. You can't forgive them. You can't really do much for them. But you can bring them to me. Bring them to my feet. Just bring, leave them there. Bring them and leave them there. I'll take care of the rest. That's what he says. I'll take care of the rest. So what do you mean? I mean, sometimes it's as simple as your prayers lifted up for a particular person. Seeking for them consolation, comfort, strength, whatever you want to call it. Another person is shackled in an addiction. Bring them to Jesus. Say, well, what if they won't listen to me? He will listen to you. They may not, but He will. Tell Him about them. Say, well, He already knows. Yes, He knows all things. He knows all things. But still, He says, tell me about them. Bring them to me. Any relationship between people requires communication. You may say, well, if someone tells me, your children tell me, tell me I love you. Or your spouse tells you, tell me I love you. Well, you already know I love you. It's, you still say it anyway. You still say it anyway because that's part of the relationship. That's part of the depth and the growth. You don't need to say it, but you should. You don't need to say it because we know, but you should. The Lord says the same. Tell me. Bring everything to me. These four men went through all kinds of challenges to bring this crippled person to them. To Jesus, I mean. Jesus says, do the same. Do the same. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Don't worry about the result. Don't worry about the outcome. It's not your problem at that point. He's the Savior. Just bring Him to the Savior. St. Paul says to the Colossians, to them, to everyone, God will to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, among all nations, in other words. What is this great mystery? What is this mystery? This mystery that God came to save sinners of whom I am chief. That God who is self-sufficient would want to create a creation, a humanity, who would rebel time and time again in every generation. Rebel all kinds of rebellions. All kinds of resistance. You look at all of creation, it follows God's command like clockwork. The only one that does not do so the only one that insists on resisting is humankind. The one that is supposedly created in the image and likeness of God. And yet he says, I love these. I created you in my image and in my likeness. I love you. I love you so much. This is what he's saying. This is the mystery St. Paul is preaching. Which is Christ in you. Because you have been, if you're a Christian, 
If you have been baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, if you have been chrismated by the Holy Chrism, you have become a Christian, a bearer of Christ, a disciple, a follower of Christ. Christ is in you. That's the hope of glory. That's the hope of what you will receive, that glory that will never fade away in eternity. He says, this is the one we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that when we present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, presenting everyone perfect. These four men took this man, presented him to Christ. And Christ did the perfection. Christ did the healing. Christ did the forgiveness. And the forgiveness, of course, as you know, to forgive sins is much more difficult than to tell someone, rise up and walk. Or vice versa, depending on the circumstance. But with Jesus, both are possible because he wills it. He really wills it for each. Today, St. Paul says, Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? St. Paul puts that last question for you and for me to realize that when you think, well, I can't do what you're talking about. Who am I to talk to someone about Christ? Who am I to try to bring someone to Christ? Who am I to pray even with all my sins and all my mistakes and all my... Jesus says, no, 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 no. Forget all that. St. Paul tells you, no, 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 no. Forget all that. Who is sufficient for these things? If St. Paul, the great apostle, would consider himself insufficient of these things, he tells you, don't worry about it. No sweat. None of us are sufficient for these things. To be the aroma of life to life and death to death, depending on the one willing to receive or not, Christ. He says, yeah, don't worry about it. Just do it. Don't worry about being sufficient. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being from ourselves. It's not from us. But our sufficiency is from God, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. These four men didn't worry about what happens once he gets to Jesus' feet. They didn't worry about the obstacles and the heavy weight and the crowd in the way and going through someone, breaking someone's roof to uh, bring this person safely down in front of Jesus. They realized that the sufficiency will not be from them. They just did it. And the Lord did what we cannot do. The letter kills, the Spirit gives life. And the Spirit is the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. St. Peter tells us today, since you have purified your souls. Notice the combination or the connection. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. He's, he says that this is religion, or this is spirituality, or this is the definition of being a Christian. You want to obey the truth, which is Christ. You want to obey being Christian. Obedience to Christ is obedience to His love, to His gospel, to His legacy as who He is and what He did and what He accomplished out of love on the cross. So He tells you and tells me, if you've purified your soul by obeying this truth, then in return for that truth, in sincere love for one another, Love everyone around you fervently. You may never speak to them. You may never know them. You may not know them by name. But love them anyway. Love them fervently with a pure heart. Love salvation for them. Pray that they also may be brought to His feet and be carried up by Him. Pray for this. Wish this fervently from a pure heart. This is the link, the correlation between the message of the gospel and what we do about it as Christians. This is the link. This is the bond of love. The bond of perfection. That Christ loves us. And we love Him by loving those whom He loves. Which is everyone. Very simple. This is the gospel message in a nutshell. That's why he, the Lord Himself said in John 13. After He washed the disciples' feet. Including Judas who would soon after betray Him. By this all will know that you are my disciples. If you have love for one another. If you have love, do you have love for one another? 
This is the ultimate question, linking what St. Peter says here and the words of our Lord in the Gospel in John 13. Everyone will know you're a Christian by this. This is the standard, the gold standard. All will know you're Christian if you have love for one another. Love, of course, starting between you and God, you and your loved ones at home, you and the, the, the circles and the ripples all the way to the rest of the planet. So I St. Peter continued and said today, as you come to him as living stones, you may be rejected by men, but in the sight of God, you're very chosen and precious. You yourselves like living stones, not dead stones, not brick, living, living stones, part of the body of Christ, are being built up a spiritual house to be a holy priest, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ, to offer these are the gifts to offer one another. These are the acceptable gifts to offer to Christ. One another. Lift each other up. One another. You know, there's a famous quote that says, never look down on someone except if it's to lift them up. If you're looking down on someone in any condescension, judgment, condemnation, finger pointing, then you've, you've missed the mark of Christ. But if you look down on them simply because you're trying to lift them up, just like these four men look down upon their crippled friend to lift him up, to bring him to Jesus, then you're offering up what is acceptable before Christ our Lord. The Lord says to us and reminds us at the end of Mark, Jesus said to them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, every soul, every person. So by bearing one another and bearing with one another, and caring one another, and covering one another, and forgiving one another, and one another, one another, one another. All the positive verbs that we need to, and actions that we need to do as Christians, by doing this, you are every time fulfilling the law of Christ. Every single time you do this, you are fulfilling His law. His royal law, which is His love for all mankind. That all may be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.